Hey, Eric's here. Sorry, I was uh, like I was plugging the stuff I have coming up. I'm still waiting for makeup. <laughs> they they didn't show up at your house? Not yet. I don't know. I'll call them. They might be in traffic or something, man. <laughs> the lighting guys are still like you know trying to figure out something that won't glow off my head. Hence, <laughs> I wish I had, I wish I had a stocking. <laughs> You know what? We're about to redo all the uh, apparel for Tobrick because we're there's some reasons that I'm not allowed to mention because the marketing team gets really mad if I talk about our new website or any of the stuff that's happening. But okay. wow. so we're gonna get the, good good thing that we're 30 seconds in. And I've already pissed off the marketing team. But um, so we're getting new ones. We're getting like Tomrick wool caps. I'll send you one. I'm 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 looking forward to being able to cover my head. <laughs> It is winter, Eric. I do it because it's and it's I, cold in the kitchen. Oh, I stay in here, like, and I go down into my cave, and I don't let the phone go for like twelve hours. <laughs> I feel like you know, like some. I have carpal tunnel uh, just from holding the phone. <laughs> but I got this new device that holds the the phone in kind of wherever I want, which is an innovation for me. Yeah, we have one of those too. I think Beth, my assistant, got it at like Michael's or something or like, you know, one I'm of those discount stores. It's on, it looks like it's got like this gooseneck thing. And can, like, yeah. Do whatever you want. That's, I, maybe that's the, the same thing. But I'm so old school when it comes to this kind of technology. Like I have this crazy phone, the 12, and I, I, I certainly don't know how to use it to its potential. I mean, what really is its potential? I mean, like, it's it's a phone, right? I mean, it's it's got but like it a has camera. an awesome camera, awesome it does, camera. It does have an yeah. I have, I think what did I get? I don't even my work. I don't even know what it is. I'm not going to turn it on because my earbuds will move over to it. But um, don't you yeah, think don't it's know. ironic that the camera doesn't take pictures of the person you're talking to? <laughs> you're like this device is for talking, <laughs> but I can't take a picture of that person. But I can, you know. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so we're supposed to talk about chocolate, Eric, right? Oh, That's yeah. what we said. But right. anyway, so Eric, I, I'll tell a little background. So I was, I'm, in the, I'm shaving this morning because it was you, and I thought I needed to look good. And um, I was trying to think the first time that we really met. And the first time we really met was in Las Vegas. You were working for Guitard, and it was a World Pastry Championship, and you threw a pool party at the top of a hotel. Oh, and I don't know what hotel. I don't I, That's all I remember. That was fun. Um, yeah, it was the ghost bar. That was... Uh, that at was, the Palms. That was an epic party. Yeah. At the Palms, at the high, at the high point of the Palms and MTV generation, I think. And do, do you remember Vera Wang? Was she there? She was a pastry chef. No, 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 no. Not the... Uh, not not the that Vera Wang. Design, you know, the wedding dresses but apparently she's doing cakes now with her name on it that's kind that's of interesting kind of and uh, but no it was at the top of uh, uh, top of that goes to bar, bar. And, and, yeah and i was um <laughs> i was, I was sad, sad because, because it was part, part of the, 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 the forum. forum right and fair and adria Brother, brother, his brother, brother uh, was, was kind, kind of like, like my, my, my sidekick um, because, because I, had I had to keep him full of Heineken. Heineken. That's what, what I was told. He didn't speak a lot, lot of um, um, English. So when he decided he wanted to come to the party and he decided, <laughs> they, they told me, okay, don't take him like anywhere else, but he likes Heineken. Oh, but anyway, Vera, I had, because it was kind of a, a pool party and all she had was her chef gown or her chef coat. So I had to get her. By the way, I like chef gown. I'm going to start referring to it as my chef gown. Sorry. From now on. Like, no, seriously, I thought Sorry. it was awesome. Like, I'm going to order custom chef gowns from now on. I, uh, well, it, 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 well, actually, it could show that you've, got a, a pedigree in in chef coats they get right. long you know. i can get like strapless chef gowns 
<laughs> this really is like one of our conversations. <laughs> it's taken, it's like, we're like, what? We're like four minutes in and we've already taken this like turn into like, anyway, okay, so Vera's at this party with no, no bathing suit. All she has is her chef jacket and, you know, like her, her pants and it was a pool party. So she said, well, I've got my bikini top but I don't have a bottom. And I said, well, I'll just go into the gift shop and get you one of those cover-ups. So I went and bought her a cover-up so she could come to the party. <laughs> now, those were fun times. I drank a lot of Red Bull that night. That's all I really remember. Did you? I drank, yeah. Like, we were talking. So for those in the know, Eric and I did a little practice this morning. And, like, I said I'm not allowed to drink coffee anymore because I'm not allowed to caffeine. And I think part of the reason I'm not allowed caffeine is what the, it, like Red Bull was, like, this thing that, like was always in my hand, right? Like I'll have a Red Bull. That'll be great. Yeah. The Guana Barana, whatever that <laughs> whatever it is. I yeah. Uh, I just remembered like going back to my room at the Rio, kinda like, I can't sleep. I don't know why. What were you doing? I was at a party. It was awesome. <laughs> That's when yeah, it was. It was very, very popular. So anyway, so we so when was it? I don't even know when that was. That had to be fifteen years ago. Easy. We're getting old, brother. I know. Been doing this flavor thing quite a long time. So but, you, know, you said never... we don't want to talk about you, but I do want to talk about you for a minute. So, uh, I don't... A, a boy from the Upper Midwest. Upper Midwest. I'm from the West, my friend. I don't. If it's not the West Coast or the East Coast, I don't really oh. know where anything is. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Is the gateway to the West. You're from Montana, though, right? And most no Wyoming, I'm from... North Dakota. I don't know what. One of those flyover states to the bookends. Yeah. The square one. Wyoming. Yeah. Home of Dick Cheney. Boy, um, yeah. We won't go into those stories, but uh, his his daughter is now, yeah, part of that whole legacy. She's in the Senate, I think. Yeah. We did a cake for him when he was at, when he was the vice president. Oh, really? Did, and when I say we, I mean Anil did a cake for him. Right. Anil and Amanda. I kind of like watched it happen. She worked with Susie? Not then. That was in that kitchen at that point was Anil, Amanda, and myself. Oh, uh, okay. So Roland wasn't I I can't remember who was president. Oh, Bush, I guess. Bush was president. Oh. Roland Roland was was he in the White House or was Thaddeus no, there? Thaddeus. I don't, Thaddeus, Thaddeus was. was in the White House, but this was for the vice president. It was at the observatory, it wasn't at the White House. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So but um, Thaddeus is now at the uh, at the Hard Rock. Which one in uh, in in Atlantic City? I did not know that. Yeah, that's. I don't know if that's under wraps. <laughs> so hey, so what we can do is we can just drop a lot of names of people we know. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. You know. No. We don't. no I was, you know, like where Thaddeus where, Dubois. Because like, that's kind of a new, unique property. I haven't been there because I haven't been anywhere other than like this kitchen and my house in the last. 10 I months. keep trying to say t to my wife uh, that we should go to the Hard Rock because one, it's closed, and she's like, um, "Are you crazy?" Because I I don't want to like recognize that um, that this thing is going on, and I'm like, "Hey, let's go," and she's like, "No, no." Yeah, it's all in her best interest because I just <laughs> want to go everywhere, all the time. Yeah, and like, we what's, like well, you're yeah. like me. I mean, when was the last when was the last time you were on an airplane? In the the fifth day of March, I was in At, Charlotte. But and we saw each other the week before, probably right in or the weekend. No, were you in in San Francisco? Had fine My, chocolate? Dude, no. But for fine chocolate. Oh yeah. So that yeah, so that was previous. That was, you asked me the last time I was on a plane, and that was right. to Charlotte. That was like the week after. Right. Yeah, so flying home from that show was the last time I was on a plane. That was back when I had a lot of miles. <laughs> I know, me too. Like, like, I don't know what they were going to do with us. because Well, they, they said it, we got another year, but now I'm not using them this year either. Like 15 extra days of elite. <laughs> Yeah, you get one more flight, Elite. We'll upgrade you one last time, and then you're back in the coach with everybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've not mentioned chocolate once. Okay, so Eric, you're from no, you, you grew up. You grew up in Wyoming. You um, were not a culinary guy. 
right? If memory serves me, like food wasn't on your radar at all. Well, I you ate. No, I had a lot of chefs um, as as friends in Texas, like Catherine Clapner, um, and I was actually a theater guy, and I wrote a play about cacao and chocolate and the president of the Venezuelan Chocolate Company, which is um, Jorge, um, which is where I came into El Rey, asked me if I'd go and tell that story to um, to chefs. And El Rey is a fantastic product. I mean, the first time you taste it, if you've never, like if you were a Hershey person or, you know, um, and back then, 25 years ago, <laughs> chocolate, good flavor chocolate did not have the kind of traction that it does now. It's it's taken 25 years to get here. Um, but the first time I put that in my mouth, I was like, whoa, what? It, I mean, not what is this, but oh, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> and wow, that's some seriously good good stuff and then yeah. you know it's kind of come into its yeah i mean you and i joke about like my love of gift cap bars and that, like i eat i eat garbage american chocolate and um as did i but and that that it has a special place in my heart and i and i talk about like hershey in particular like that sour flavor is something that i grew up with right i mean and it it, it i've always had this sort of like affinity for chocolate good bad indifferent right and right. but you're right i mean chocolate from i'm doing the math in my head so that's like 95 right and i was i was working in restaurants but i wasn't on the i wasn't doing fine food and i definitely wasn't doing good pastry you know i mean chocolate came in a box called dark right, right. like you, right. what do you need i need 20 pounds of chocolate what kind chocolate dark like yeah. what and the only baking chocolate that you could get on the, in the grocery stores was Baker's, and it came in that little box. Right. Uh, you'd be able to get the guitar chips, but, you know, before that, that was pretty much it. Right. Um, you know, and so you're right. I mean, that the, this industry in a quarter of a century, that makes it sound like a really long time, however, but, you know, in 25 short years, as opposed to the person that's telling me uh, they were six when that happened, but um, you know, right, has right. changed. I mean, it, it's it's a new world, right? Um, okay, so so you end up working with, with El Rey, right? Except for the people that that grow it, um, that right. hasn't completely gotten there yet. But no, people don't want to pay for um, for for quality products that go all the way back to the farm because it's it would be very very expensive chocolate if everyone were getting the same margin i don't right. know if I talk about that but i love to talk about that. <laughs> as you know that i mean that's kind of my my favorite part of chocolate um doing what i'm doing now um right. so I, I, you know, it's kind of comes all circle because my, my very beginning, I really enjoyed the Hershey story because I believed it. Um, and, you know, him, all the profits of Hershey going to the boys school. Right. And it's that's why it's so ironic that 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 the Hershey company is one of the biggest culprits of mass cocoa and, and some of the challenges in Ivory Coast. Some of some of the biggest companies are, and I, I rage against the the machine, if you will, because the Harkin Protocol is where it, it um, is where that takes its form, and we can go to first primary source material to say, you know what, twenty years ago, you signed this. And now it's 20, 25 years later. And look what you said back then and what has changed. And they can't say that it has changed. Otherwise, we would have a different legislation or we would have different protocol that would be accepted by everybody. Yeah, I mean, it, it brings up all those challenges, right? About, uh, about how we source 
good. Well, like kind I don't, of. The, I don't want to just talk about chocolate, right? I mean, in that in that regards. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but that that chain, the 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 cocoa chain, that's that's the most important thing, and shining light where it never has been. That's that's super important. Right. I mean, I think that that's one of the cool things about your story. So anyway, so you, you worked with El Rey for a while and really helped to develop that brand in the United States. You you left El Rey. Well, and I learned so much. Right. I mean, so much from that time. And I got to take, you know, fantastic chefs to Venezuela and start to get into the cocoa fields. And I mean, Barlavento and Chihuahua and Choroni. Um, you know, I mean, that's some amazing, amazing places. Right. That no one goes to. Yeah. Well, you told, you asked me this morning, like, where in Venezuela you go? I'm like, I don't know. I, I went where I was told. Right. I mean, and I don't know. The driver took me to like cocoa plantations. Sure. One All right. Experience having a machine gun next, you know, like take us around. That's kind of scary. Well, yeah. That's like last time I was in Bogota, right? So the cab pulls up into the into the lobby of the hotel, right? But before we can, there's a guy with a dog and a machine gun and a mirror. And it's just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not in Buffalo anymore. Right. <laughs> like, and, I've traveled all over the world. And it was like, okay, but, this yeah. is different. Right. <laughs> Colombia has actually changed quite a bit. Um, Medellin's completely not the drug capital of the world. It's, right. it's, it's, it's nice. But, but I mean, I think that raises some interesting points about, you know, this raw material, this agricultural good, is being sourced in parts of the world that are very different than sourcing oranges in Florida. Right. And you do have to take into consideration the cost of living in those places. So it's not like the cost of living here because, you know, but, but all, uh, all factors, uh, mostly they just want to be recognized from talking to a lot of growers. This right. is important to them. Right. I, and I, I think what's amazing, too, is that like the, the, the number of people that, that are on the growing side of cacao that have never experienced chocolate. Boy, that's one of my favorite things to do is take bars that are finished um, from either smaller artisan chocolatiers or the company that I'm with take it down to the, the growers and let them taste this for the first time. And boy, I can remember hey, Winter, doing that we sure in can pack your order. In and I do just want to quickly say, we appreciate orders of absolutely any <laughs> These size. People, Big orders, small lot, orders, they all of, keep of, us... You know, gringos or, or foreigners, um, uh, you know, tasting that kind of chocolate was very foreign to them. I think the people that like, Maya Mountain that are now bringing their their beans in, or or maybe it's Emily at, um, I, um, yeah, I think it's Maya Mountain, right? Um, that that bring the the raw cacao into um, people that are bean to bar, um, doing that now. Um, but that was an incredible experience because they had hardly even seen us. We had to ride three hours in a canoe just to get. <laughs> And we had to fly an hour and a half from La Paz to, you know, get there. And that was, that was kind of in, in, insane. The, the funniest. Did you take that, by the way? Is that important? Is that like your boss? Is that Brian? Sorry. Answer. I'm just wondering. Ah. No, it's all good. Um, is Jorge Redman. I don't know. Should I? No, I'm kidding. So, okay. So you, you, El Rey for a while you really learned about chocolate el rey and then you moved on to to guitar from el rey i did i did i was fortunate enough to um to work with their company and it was i mean it's so it's so different because the scale and the kind of clients and customers that guitar services wildly different than somebody gonna pay you know four dollars a pound or six dollars a pound for for chocolate but um these manufacturers um and and cookie places and ice cream places i mean it Coffee really shops. opened my opened my mind and education uh up and then i got to meet one of my you know 
favorite, favorite people in all of chocolate, and that's Thalia um, there. And she's one of their chief scientists. And I like, I just, you know, so loved to spend time with her. And then Ed, I mean, Ed Squine, you know, a titan in the industry. And uh, he was fascinating to talk to and just to learn from. And Gary, I mean, Gary's got great stories, great Coco stories. Um, you know, of, of uh, literally, this guy grew up in the chocolate industry. He talks yeah. about when he was a kid and sitting on giant bags of cocoa. I mean, I can't even imagine like being your whole life knowing nothing else. But right. yeah, he's he's got some some great stories. So I moved on. Well, that's when um, Valrona came to me. Uh, and asked if I would go on to the East Coast. And I was looking really to, you know, um, learn more and more in the pastry world. Right. And Rona was easily able to, to do that. I mean, I went to Ecole for like maybe eight different week-long, uh, well, there were three-day, three-day right. um dive into recipes specific recipes and you know i i couldn't uh, have asked for <laughs> a better education i mean it's like you know when that door opens and you follow through and you just don't know where that is going to take you like i had no idea that venezuela was going to be in my future and then i had no idea that um you know i was going to be talking to the people at uh, ben and jerry's <laughs> and then i had no idea that it was going to be going to uh, the great, one of the high-end chocolate uh, school in the world. So it's just been kind of crazy ride. You know, and, and you don't have to tell the story because I don't, I, I, you've told me the story, but one of my favorite stories about you and we're, if people you, even once the route has been set, like once you're walking down the path, I don't think a meeting with Snoop Dogg <laughs> would have been one of the things that you would have expected to have, right? I mean, that Snoop Dogg got you into chocolate Got you introduced to Snoop Dogg. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was wild. What do you refer is he is he referred to Mr. Dog? Is he Mr. Doggy Dog? Is he Mr. Snoop? Like how do you like here's my card, Mr. Dog? I mean like <laughs> No, it wasn't anything like that. Uh yo, yo Snoop, what up? I'm more interested in listening to him yeah, talk. Um, you know, than anything. I mean, because he's got a, a challenging um, under, like, you're trying to figure out, like, what is exactly he's saying. Yeah. And he's got people, um, you know, that are kind of handling, uh, certainly the purchasing, etc. Right. It was more about what was he trying to accomplish. And that was really interesting because he's very articulate about his kind of um, his kind of flavor. You know and, what's interesting, Eric? Is it like if I were to say something about you, um, something nice about you, as opposed to something snarky or, or right. you know, sarcastic? Because there's um, out of it. Christopher Elbow was here a minute ago. We could like dial him in and like he could tell me stories. But no, I mean, I think one of the things that um, I'm impressed about you and why you're you were different as a salesperson and, and all those things and you're still a salesperson but i mean what differentiates you in a lot of ways is your desire to really understand like my story and what i need when we're having a conversation and not to tell me what you think i need mm. from your catalog of products right now you're going to listen and if you have the right solution you're going to give it to me but I think you're as knowledgeable as you are because you spent, you've spent the last 25 years listening like to the industry and about your comment about Valrona. I wanted to go to Valrona because it was a new part. I was going to be able to learn about a new segment of the business that I was in. And that's really cool. I don't think, I, I think there are a lot of people that aren't like that on, in anywhere. But I mean, I think in the chocolate industry, you, you stand out to me as somebody that, that does that more than anybody I know. Oh, thank you. That's, um, that's my idea. That's my desire. And hopefully I can, you know, 
plug people in the industry just to get them to to be be better and to to continue um, to have relationships that sometimes people don't. I find a lot about chefs is that they are they think about food not inspiration and not where it can come from or not where what that food's potential is like w like how do you come to, to the, those flavors um and to me it's it's super important to think outside of the box and most of the time it's not exactly getting them to go oh that flavor you know goes that but it's about allowing them the opportunity to have the answer and i can take them outside of the box and talk differently yeah i, it, I think it's I, when i see you calling eric if i don't have 45 minutes i don't pick up <laughs> right because i know we're going to end up in these conversations that are going to go places that i don't know where they're going to go well that's particular to people that i i know <laughs> most people <laughs> Say, yeah, we can. I mean, he gives me 10, 15, 15 minutes, but I'm not talking to him. <laughs> Wait, who's that? Is that face call it again? Right, let it go to voicemail. I'll pick it up later. <laughs> yeah, I would hope that doesn't happen a lot. No, of course not, Eric. Uh, Generally, if, if I, I don't pick up, I'm busy. When we're talking about molds or things that I'm looking at now, it can be very quick. Hey, I've got three minutes. What? <laughs> Hey, who, that who llama, I, by the way, that llama, like I saw the last version of the llama. Oh, good. So it's yeah. still working. I know it was supposed to be for Don't Christmas. Be late. I, okay, we're doing it for free. So. No, I'm just saying, like, we, I got this fantastic pastry chef to um, make the llama head. And my daughter said it was absolutely wonderful. So. We, she's, we've really had fun with her cakes because she's gotten some of the most amazing pastry chefs to, to make them. Like Catherine Gordon has done two and Jesse, um, they're, they're at ice. Um, right. and she just had so much fun. Like we try to do storybooks, like we did Madeline and we did, uh, the hungry little caterpillar, which we absolutely adored and Catherine made this fantastic caterpillar that was going through the, the book. But hopefully Rory's gonna grow up in this and actually go to maybe culinary school. I, I don't know, we don't really push her in any direction, but boy, does she have a nice flavor profile um, that she'll ultimately hopefully employ in some, some way. Right, People hey, I, I, I hey. promised, by the way, this morning, I promised her a bunny, one of those bunnies for Easter. Yes. I'll send her a llama for Easter. That'll be done by Easter. I know it was for Christmas, but it'll be done in time for spring. I'll send her I a spring llama. A bunny challenge, though, with that fantastic mold that you have. And allow chocolatiers all over the country if they... if they Let me go grab one. I'm yep. going to go grab one. Hold on. So you fill time, Eric. Talk amongst yourselves. And if they would utilize their art background, not just um, make it, but how do you make a bunny look different and still capture, you know, the essence of what that bunny is? Um, I, I, I think that, yeah, exactly. Like you did with the milk, the dark, the white. Um, maybe this year can be, yes, colors, but- None of it was Hershey. Color blocking, that's fantastic to know. <laughs> There's some, so there's some product from Italy. It's a world bunny. There's a product from Pennsylvania. Nice. And then there's some product from France. Nice. He's a global bunny. That's why I see the, the, the nose <laughs> shine. Yeah. Actually, people are really generous with me. I mean, you've been really generous with me. I mean, Cho, you sent us chocolate as well. You know, I mean, I've got... I've got this great environment where like, I call somebody and go, I need 50 pounds of chocolate. And they go, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know, something milk? And they go, sure. Well, and it's, it's I mean, you run a, a great school and you know, people, people learn how to, one, yes, use your equipment. But two, I mean, you're an amazing pastry chef in your own right, which I don't think a lot of people talk on this show about. But you know. Shoemaker, I'm a shoemaker, Eric. Well, I mean, 
that's, I mean, having gone through all the pastry courses that I have, I can make myself around a pastry kitchen pretty, pretty well, and even go into recipes. But, um, and te techniques are, are fun. So those chocolatiers that are coming up, that's a pretty easy, you know, talk. Because, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out how does a business work? How can I make yeah. this skill into a business? And um, hopefully that's really a lot of, um, that's a passion for me because I want them to succeed. Um, because it, it, it's, but then you have to ask, why are you in the business? Is it to just make money and to make more money than you possibly can imagine? Or do you love this profession right. and is it art to you? Well, okay, so I won't tell you who this said this to because I don't want to embarrass them, but in a previous job, I worked in a kitchen uh, similar to this one where we had people in it all the time and this mom brings like this Girl Scout troop in or something, right? And and this girl was like, looks at one of the other people in the kitchen is like, how do I do what you do? And she looked at her very calmly and was like, um, do you want to make any money? And she's like, well, yeah. She goes, do you do anything else well? You know, and I think that unfortunately on that value chain conversation again, right? Where you were talking about that growers aren't making a ton of money. The reality of it is, you know, the, 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 the man or the woman, you know, in the kitchen very often isn't making a lot of money either. Or there's one person in the kitchen that is doing okay. And then there's a lot of people that are like working three places, especially in somewhere like New York, right? Where you know a lot of people, right? Who are working 70 hours a week. Yeah. Just to not to, to, to pay for rent. Yeah. Right. Because, because we love what we do. Right. In theory. Right. And, and, right. and then, and then there's people like me that have been really fortunate, right. Who, because I've opened some doors and I've been in the right place at the right time to really lead a pretty luxurious life. I mean, I work Monday through Friday. I work 8.30 to 5 most of the time. A regular, yeah. I took the week from two days before Christmas until New Year's off. Like, the guys that I know in this industry and the women I know in this industry aren't doing that. Right. It's, um, that's, that's true. Right. And I think, you know, like you said, I think we, there's, there's a passion piece there, right? Like, you and I both know a lot of people that are incredibly passionate about what they do. There's a bunch of names that have been flipping by on the screen down here for me that I know personally that are ridiculously passionate about what they do. Like you're a passionate guy about what you do and sometimes they're rewarded for that. Right. And they do okay. And sometimes you can do everything right and they're not rewarded for that financially. Right. Right. Well, and, and to me, it's always been about the choices um, of bettering my um, kind of understanding of chocolate because I kind of did fall in love with it that that first moment that I tasted really good chocolate uh, because it kind of it's it's one of those things like it bit you and like whoa uh, okay I got that um, and it hasn't for me it hasn't gone away because tasting all the different beans um, that ultimately turn into chocolate and then the techniques that different companies use in order to achieve the consistency. And that's really the, 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 the point when someone's going to try to build a business on um, a specific chocolate. I, we talked yesterday and you wanted me to maybe say that today, but I, I completely believe this. Uh, um, I had the opportunity to be in um, I, I don't mean to name drop, so I'll just say a, a wonderful restaurant. And he told me, he Love said, the, the difference between a good chef and a great chef, and this goes for chocolatiers or anybody in the chocolate world, is a good chef writes one check, a great chef writes 10. And what I mean by that is they're buying different things in order to create the piece of work that they're trying to show off because each each one of those bonbons should tell a story not because oh everybody's got a salted caramel well you know everybody has a salted caramel but not everyone makes the salted caramel the same way nor you know the thing that drives me crazy in 
chocolate shops is when someone gets $29 a pound for $2.99 or $4 a pound chocolate. Like that should make them angry. Or that should, that should make them um, feel terrible <laughs> because of, you know, the disparage. Even, even with capital expenditure, you know, having the lights. Right. Um, but, but more than anything, like, okay, $29 a pound should be a, a pretty fine chocolate that you're using. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's that, tough, right? What I mean by a pretty fine chocolate is knowing where those beans come from. It's just not, oh, the, the brand is, is you know, uh, amazing. Frankly, know your supply chain and know how the supply chain gets it there. Which I think is a nice segue into, so you where I want to go in this conversation, and that's you worked with Valrona for a while and you really got to understand the bakery side of the business in New York and that whole and, side. And, and, and well, pastry chefs, a pastry, pastry uh, rather than chocolate. Is that right. fair? Yeah. And, and that relationship ended, we we'll put it that way. And in the last year and a half or so, you started working with this new company, not a new company, but you for new, who really understands those things, right? I mean. Yeah. And, and they really, truly are trying to um, change the cocoa supply chain with a lot of visibility so that you know we can talk to you see this is the thing but do you want to tell anybody what the name of the company is because i didn't eric so this is your job no. right which is a a craft chocolate company out of san francisco and they're doing some fantastic things one with flavor but two really with the value chain um of where it's coming from working with people that we know not once they oh we get a certificate that says there are people out in uh the fields and they've checked and there's no children you know having uh challenges like right. and what I mean by children having challenges it's like okay the children are walking two miles in order to get to the cocoa growing where they pick it and then two miles on the way back in maybe the night and right holding a machete and having to, you know, now it sounds like, oh, these are crazy stories. These are real stories that happen. And that's the difference between knowing where your cocoa comes from and, and not. Right. But if you're okay with that, that's terrible, but okay, then, you know, I guess you have to live with yourself. And I'm not saying that Cho is the only company that does this, but we absolutely know that there is two, three times the whole co-op that goes out and checks, has right. people looking right. and watching. I'm, because right. Ivory Coast can tell you that, no, we don't. Because right now there are that's still going on right and it's it's it <laughs> I, I can't even believe that we're still dealing with that even ghana comes out you know with cocoa board and talks about um you know how we're doing better well the united states we sh we, sh we yeah we should be doing better we should not be doing it at all not better <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting about that too, Eric, is that you've also created a product. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry, I talked. I talked over you. I, so I didn't hear the last sentence. Oh, we can only do that with our dollars, and not buy that. Right, which I think is also interesting that you guys have created products that that a work that taste good, right, yeah. and they work well, right, and they're able to be they 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 can dovetail into that in, in more industrial situation than you know, somebody that can make enough chocolate for themselves. Well, this is the interesting, um, this is the interesting kind of puzzle that we're in and, and we're trying to find out, can we take craft chocolate to market in a larger way and get it into chef's hands? And it doesn't, you know, 
completely break the bank. And that's all about scalability. I mean, every craft chocolate company is going to, to go into that. And where do you get capital in order to uh, make that make that happen? And right. we've got a, a very nice model that allows um, for some of that. But we it's all about people and the chefs knowing, you know, knowledge is so important to anybody when they're trying to accomplish flavor when they're trying to accomplish getting a product that works usability is certainly important yeah i mean and functionality right i mean and that's something that's yeah like where, where i sit you know I, I mentioned earlier that i can sort of pick up the phone and get chocolate from anybody these days and i mean i'm not selling it so it doesn't matter what it costs to me yeah i want it to work and i want it to taste good well right Right. Right. And, uh, you know, you you were very kind and you guys sent, I don't know, 50 kilos of chocolate to us so that we could do some trials. And, you well, know, I think the okay. thing that I tell me, you know, tell me specifics and and things, things that I needed um, just in order to be, you know, used you um, just in order for me to be usable <laughs> to, you know, my friends, my clients. But what I was going to say is that, you know, I mean, fundamentally, A, it worked, you know, I mean, it, it tempered and it had shine and it went through the machine and, you know, all those things that like, it's, it's got to do that for me or else it doesn't have value at all. Right, right. Yeah. And it, it's, um, it's a very nice product, I, I um, have to ad admit. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Like. Favorite, Place. favorite, favorite trip, favorite chocolate trip. That could be a plantation. It could be a plant. It could be, some, it could be whatever. What is it? Honduras. Without a doubt. Well, no, no, no. With the canoes? The canoe trip? Yeah. I mean, it was so much more rustic. But Madagascar was by far the most outrageous. <laughs> I, I mean, off the chart. Were you read, did, the, did the lemurs walk you around? Uh, we got to spend a lot of time with levers or lemurs, um, and they walked two or three of us. More, John uh, at John and Kira's more. They walked him around. <laughs> hey, somebody's asking about where can we get this chocolate. So, if somebody wants to try the industrial cho, where, what's the best way to get get a handle on it? Or or email me. Uh, until one of the first things that I'm I'm trying to put together that they know is super important for the chef. This is a whole new program for Cho, the, getting into the chef. But uh, we're going to put a wholesale site um, up. So now you'll be able to get one or two or three cases. Uh, very exciting. You know, somebody in cool. Oklahoma that um, doesn't know where or how to get, they'll be able to go to Cho.com. Um, right. And it'll be the, under the pro uh, circuit, but otherwise, um, yeah, write to me. I'll figure out if there's Eric. A, it's Eric. Case at Cho. Com, right? It's Eric. Case at T C H O. Dot com. Cho is the biggest challenge for some. They're like, how do you say that? Cho. Hey, I didn't know. I didn't know until you started working for him. Right. <laughs> I'm like, Cho took took. Tacoa? Uh, uh, yeah. T T Yeah. That's uh Chuo. It makes a okay, lot so, so so the the canoe trip or maybe Madagascar is what you're telling uh, me. Yeah, I, I mean if you ask the people that were there with us, um running out of gas in the middle of the Indian Ocean is um pretty spectacular. <laughs> um and that was a little scary. Because just, you know, earlier in the afternoon, we saw quite a few um, odd things, you know, going up and around the, the, the boat. But actually having to fret for about two hours uh, about when is uh, gas going to arrive and our guide not necessarily knowing at the time. Um, his, his um, what do you call it, uh, walkie-talkie was going in and out. Um, that that was really really scary but uh going down the i mean we had to take a plane 
over the green mountains um, of Honduras and get to this little runway. And we had just heard that the day before a plane had flipped on that runway. And what, what I mean by that is these are small planes and it hit a pothole flipped over, you know, and that happens sometime, <laughs> which, okay, that's a little scary, but we're approaching where we're supposed to be because he's got, you know, GPS coordinates, but he turns over to me and I'm in the co-pilot seat and he turns over to me and he says, um, look for the orange um, strip. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, well, it should be around here somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So he does this deep dive. He's going around, he's going around, and there it is. Okay, so it's right over there. So he looks at it, and we can see the plane flipped over. <laughs> and we're like, oh, my God. And he's like, yeah, we'll make one more run, and we'll come down. Okay. <laughs> so we go around go down past the plane that has flipped and he turns over and he says good landing <laughs> yeah that's just like my last landing at newark that's so, exactly how it went the pilot came back and said hey can you look for the can you look for the strip i feel like you're in laguardia when that you know, do you remember when the plane kind of went over and <laughs> fell in <laughs> anyway i think it's those little un um unexplained moments that that make for uh, the best trips but it, it's also generally the group that goes has a, a very amazing bonding experience yeah it's interesting i've been watching some of the comments roll by and you know people that you and i are both probably pretty good friends with and and people have opinions about those trips based on who was with them like oh you know th there's stories about an ecuador trip that i think i know everybody that was on the trip i'm not sure how i didn't get invited but uh I wish you would come with us sometime. That that would be super fun. I'm I'm always game to go to plantation, but um, you know, and you're right. I mean, I think it is. We have this little network of people and and experiences. Like when people ask me what my favorite meal I've ever eaten is, my answer has more to do with who was at the table than what I had to eat. Doesn't it? And, and I think chocolate is the same way. Right, and so like some of my like. I'm really big on pure chocolate right now out in Sacramento, Ramon Perez, right? And Ramon, like, I think it was more about the experience where Ramon opened the doors to me and invited me into his kitchen. And he put every piece of chocolate that he had made in the last six weeks out on the table and said, I want you to taste everything. And it was overwhelming and it was delicious. And it was right. It, it, I think food transcends. I think the cool thing about us and our business is that, we, it is, it transcends all those individual little things and it creates this experience, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I told you my first trip to Venezuela was with the guys from ADY and I went with Anil and the, the intern, right? And that was an incredible experience. And I shared that with those two other people and nobody else, right? And I can't, you, we've, you've been to Venezuela a ton of times and I've been to plantation a ton of times, and none of those are that experience ever again. Yeah. You know? I see the chefs the first time we pop open a cocoa pod and let them taste it, the baba. Let them, let them just kind of oh, yeah. play with it. I, I remember going on one trip, and each chocolatier got to plant their own um, tree. Cool. And that's, that's really fun. I, I wish we could sponsor more, like, trees on this side. Chocolate. Right. And you, you know what's interesting, though, Eric, is that I forget that most people don't get that experience ever. Right? Like, a chef. The, yeah, chefs, chocolatiers, people that, have right. with chocolate, people that have worked with chocolate their whole life. We talked about, you know, people at Plantation don't get to taste chocolate, but people that have worked with chocolate for 40 years don't really understand it's from a tree. And see, that's that's a shame, um, yeah. travesty. Um, you know, like if cocoa or cacao is your business, you should know everything about it. Yeah, I mean that's my take. 
But I mean, but I think that's back to that passion thing again, too, about. But if it's your business, if, if you own this business, I, I have taken people on trips. They'd never, they, they, they have four or five chocolate shops. They've never been to a plantation. Now, maybe they don't have access, which is absolutely the truth. But I mean, I've taken now some groups, 10, if 10, if I can get 10 chocolatiers together, we can go on a trip and all curate it, all manicure it, and um, get into a cacao field and actually do what the the ten of them want, and then also make it a great time. <laughs> I like to do cultural, like get the music of the the place, eat the stuff that you know, have somebody that's a chef do stuff with the the food that they have down there not just oh we're gonna go because it's right. safe. you're gonna be able to eat chicken and you know oh, right like like i got to climb a temple in in mexico yeah right like not an experience that i'd ever had before but around a around a chocolate experience right so hey i i told you this was going to take feel like it was two minutes and it has totally felt like two minutes we're running out of time and instagram cuts me off and you know where i'm going because i have to ask you this question and you did, Eric, full disclosure, Eric's been a big supporter of this program, has really helped find guests and has like done an awful lot to help me through this. So that is a personal thank you, Eric, because this project would not I, have been what it was without you. Um, so Eric knows that I always ask everybody like your favorite mass market candy bar. And Eric's apparent answer was, I don't eat mass market American candy bars. So he, and his, he and his daughter went out and, and bought like, all the mass market American candy bars to try them. So Eric, what was your favorite of that pile of mass market we, American candy We candy? tried and I, I told my daughter, okay, I'll try little little bits. I, I, I still come back um, Kit Kat. The only thing, but I like to, I like, okay, there's one caveat. It's not a candy bar and my friend Alicia two chicks just thinks this is the craziest thing ever but i like oreos dipped in good chocolate <laughs> and what i mean by that is that the the cacao uh you know is yeah is I get it. flavor somewhat um, i'm picking up what you're laying down yeah yeah i got you so i don't know why more people don't don't do that but alisa says it's it's people won't pay for the the and i said people are paying for the experience you know, you, you make a story around it and people will buy it. We, uh, so we had a tour here one time of uh, some chocolate trade organization and I'm showing how to use it in Rover. Mm. And I've got, I don't know, I have a premium chocolate in the Rover. I won't mention the name, right? And, and uh, I'm enrobing. Can you not do that? <laughs> I can, but I don't want to right now. Oh. I, I'm enrobing Twinkies and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm spiraling like a hostess cupcake with white chocolate like real white chocolate on the top of each of them by hand and they kind of look at me and they're like how much would you need to get for that and i'm like i don't know like seven or eight dollars and they're like well we can't do that i'm like well that's a shame because this is delicious like if you got to take a twinkie and you coat it in a really premium chocolate it's pretty good wow um because it has so many weird things in it that it just holds up Oh, it was great. It was awesome. The flavors were there. The Twinkie was there. Like I used this like really fruity cacao. It was great. It was awesome. One of my favorite experiences. So, so one more, one more quick thing. And I know we're going to be going here, but do you know Wayne Harley Brockman? He, not he, personally. Old, old school, but um, fantastic pastry chef. He used to be um, Michael Amonico's pastry chef um, at the World Trade Center. Um, and he he continued uh luckily he wasn't there that day either but um wayne uh we said <laughs> that we want to do the you know just take all of those s old candy bars put them right. in good flavored chocolate and make them the same way and yeah you're gonna have to make them you know another i don't know three three four dollars but i think i mean thomas keller and and sebastian have certainly elevated like what what is it the he calls it the oreo it's right. 
incredible. I don't know if you've tasted it, but he also does the peanut butter. If you're at, if you're at Bouchon in New York ever. Next time. Next time I get to go to Bouchon, I'll, I'll be there. Have those two things. They are ridiculously worth the, I don't know what they are, four or five dollars. But it's about that experience. You don't need a gob of stuff in order to satiate. Right. And that's what I don't like about the 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 candy candy bars. I mean, my daughter went through, you know, that phase, but she'll always, always pick Chris's over any of the candy bars. <laughs> and maybe right. she has access to that, but that's the the difference. <laughs> All right, my friend, Instagram's going to cut us off. So oh. before you get just, before it just goes black to everybody. It's awesome okay. always to talk hey, to you. Hey, thank you, Eric. appreciate it. And um, tune, hey, you tune in next week with Nick Davis from 1-1 Cacao in uh, Jamaica. Yeah. Can't wait. That'd be cool. And then, um, but thanks for joining us. We'll talk soon. We'll talk. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick up next time you call, I promise. Shout out to my brother in California. So Was he online? Was he here? Oh, I see Bill. Oh, and Roy. In, uh... It's everybody. It's your team. All right, man. I'll catch up with you later. It's great. Peace, Eric. Thanks.